Slug. Yes. Welcome to Month of Metal Slug. Yes. All month, we are going to be looking at one of the most classic run and gun arcade shooters around the entire Metal Slug franchise. So yes, for the month of February, I want to look exclusively at Metal Slug. Every few days of the month, I'll be taking a look at a Metal Slug game. This is a massive series in terms of games released. However, they all play very similar to each other, and sooner than later, I won't even be talking about the general gameplay of Metal Slug, and I'll just be talking about what's different with each game. I am getting ahead of myself, though. To start off the month of Metal Slug, we got to start with that original Metal Slug. Now, for Metal Slug 1 through 6 and X, I will be playing Metal Slug Anthology on PS2, one of the best collections ever made for video games, like period, seriously, 7 Metal Slug games on one disc, that's crazy. Anyway, back to the topic of today's video, and that is Metal Slug 1. So Metal Slug 1 was released in arcades in 1996 by SNK. The only console that it was released on in America was the Neo Geo until the Anthology and the Virtual Console. Since then though, it's on the Switch and every PlayStation console, really. Now most people didn't even realize there is a story in Metal Slug, and I didn't too much either, to be honest. I just figured you went around killing bad guys, but no, there is a story. The story is that this guy, General Morden, performs a coup d'etat on all the world's governments and becomes an evil dictator person. Well, he needs to be stopped, and Special Forces team of Captain Marco and Tarma are sent in to do that. Yeah, the original game only has those two characters, which is weird looking back. Anyway, the way the story progresses is you basically kill everyone and they reach this guy named Alan O'Neill. He has a huge machine gun. They kill him also. Finally reaching Morden, they shoot down his helicopter and the day is saved. Morden doesn't die, however, he's thwarted for now. Like I said, for the story, most people don't even know it exists, actually. It's extremely basic and is perfect for an arcade game like this. The two main characters, Marco and Tarma, have a decent amount of personality shown in their animations alone and just want to stop this guy. Morden is cool too, as being an evil dictator has its perks and he takes full advantage of that. The story is really basic and gets the job done for what it is, but now let's talk about that wonderful gameplay. So Metal Slug 1, you start it up and you're either one or two players. Now I played through this game co-op and that means player 1 is Marco, player 2 is Tarma. They're both identical though in terms of what they can do. They can shoot weapons, they can jump, they can crouch, they can attack with a knife and throw bombs. That's all they need. Metal Slug is, like I said, a running gun game. You basically shoot everything that moves. You're always moving to the right, killing everything in sight. Lots of enemies die in like one hit, and many other enemies take much more than that. You start with a pistol at all times that is infinite ammo, but it's pretty weak. Also, the faster you tap the shoot button, the faster it will shoot. There's no automatic shit here. That goes for the whole series, actually. You have a very basic jump. It's short. It's a little delayed. It isn't amazing, but there's not really any platforming. Crouching is good for dodging bullets as well. Knifing is your melee attack. You use it when you press the fire button really close to an enemy as it, you kill him in one shot, or at least most enemies. Now as you kill enemies, you find new weapons to use. They're indicated with a bright yellowish letter, and all of these have ammunition, and when, run, when one of them runs out, it's back to the pistol. The other weapons are heavy machine gun, which is just a machine gun firing a bunch of bullets at once. A shotgun, which fires a big blast that's powerful. A rocket launcher which fires rockets and is powerful. And finally, the flame shot, which fires a like fireball projective that isn't the strongest, but it has good range. All these weapons actually totally kick ass and are all fun to use. Like, they're all crazy fun to use in any scenario. You also have bombs. You start with 10 whenever you spawn, but more can be found throughout the levels. These are also really strong and really helpful. They go in a little arc as well. Then there are the vehicles. Metal Slug 1 had a vehicle in it. The Metal Slug itself. This thing is on the cover. The tank looking machinery which has a huge Gatling gun on it that can just eviscerate pretty much everything. And if that doesn't help, the machine gun doesn't help, it shoots out giant explosive shells because you know it's a, it's a tank. It is very fun to use as well and you can mow everything down in this thing. It does have a life bar though. They can take around 3 hits before it blows up. You can buy more health for it but that's in the form of a gas canister of all things. There's also a turret near the end of the game to use that fires really fast. Other Metal Slug games add many more vehicles to the fray, but this one stays basic. Now, what are you going to be doing with all these weapons, bombs, and vehicles? You kill everything that moves, basically. Kill, kill, and did I mention kill? There's a variety of enemies in this game. Lots of foot soldiers to kill here. Usually the game's humor is shown with these foot soldiers, as usually they're just chilling, playing Game Boy. They have a spit roast, or they're just talking to each other, then they just show up. You just show up and just annihilate them. You freaking kill them all. It's perfect. 
They also use vehicles like tanks, trucks, helicopters as well. Sometimes the game halts you from going to the right and you have to kill everything in the vicinity. Then eventually, once you get to the end of the level, you reach a boss. The bosses are bullet sponges taking a ton of abuse and they can dis dish out just as much as you. They'll throw everything at you and you'll just shoot the shit out of these things, but eventually you get past them. In the original game, there are six stages and each takes a few minutes to complete. Something Metal Slug in most games around the time do is that uh, they use a live system. They also use a continue system. So you have two lives at the start. Now touching enemies does not hurt you. It's getting hit by their attacks that kills you in one hit. And after you lose those two lives, you have to use a continue, which normally would be another quarter or so. However, the anthology version has the game on free play mode, so infinite response. And you will be using them a lot, because this game is not messing around with its difficulty. This game just loves to just totally kill you all the damn time. You die a lot in this game, and you kill a lot, but like I said, you die a lot in this game, especially to the bosses. The bosses are just not fucking around at all, and are easily the hardest part of the entire game. Not everything is trying to kill you, though, as you can find these POWs of war. Rescuing them usually gives you a reward. Sometimes uh, they give you points, sometimes they give you weapons, sometimes they give you bombs, which is extremely helpful. But that's the general gameplay for Metal Slug, as you go around killing everything, saving POWs, trying not to die, and just having a good time, man. You're just killing everything. I think now is a good time to talk about the presentation of Metal Slug. Now, SNK has always been known for the really well-done sprites. They've always had great sprites, rights, whether it was King of Fighters, Fatal Fury, War of the Monsters, or even Metal Slug. All great Neo Geo games. And this game has great sprites. Obviously, they would be a bit more refined in later games, but for this first game, they look nice as well. Everything animates really solidly and has a lot of detail. The animation has a lot of charm to it, and just a lot of character put into it, whether it's the main character's facial expressions, their tiny little animations, or the enemies doing goofy animations. You can just tell there was a lot of care put into these. The vehicles look great, the guns look great, firing them looks and feels extremely satisfying. In fact, I would say that everything about the graphics department looks as satisfying as it makes you feel. It's awesome. When you're gunning down everything, you're just killing everyone that moves. It's great. Backgrounds look nice too. They aren't spectacular, but they look great. No, the graphics, they're really well done. The frame rate sadly isn't as well done. It's not perfect as, or at least it's not as good as the general graphics. It can drop a bit. Especially when there's a lot of explosions going on, it can drop. It isn't perfect. It isn't bad, but it is noticeable in a few areas. The slowdown, it really isn't that prevalent at least. The sound though, oh, the sound, it's just great. All the guns sound fantastic in this game. Killing stuff is just wonderful, like it adds to the satisfaction. Nothing but good things for the sound effects, it's all wonderful. There's no voice acting, but the sound effects that the characters make, they're all ton in cheek and they're all kind of funny. Nothing bad here. Then there's the announcer that announces what weapon you just picked up. That's great. But Metal Slug is really known for the music. The music in Metal Slug is usually pretty fantastic. The first Metal Slug, the music is good. It's it's just good. It's not as good as some of those other ones, but it, it's still good. There's some banging tunes in here. A few of these themes would get remade over and over and over in the series, and they would just get even better and better. But this is where they all started, and this is where the actual general theme for Metal Slug started. It just has this rockin' soundtrack for the most part. I liked it and would say that the music only gets better from here. Sound? Great. But now it's time to talk about what isn't great with the original Metal Slug. In all honesty, I really don't have that much to say, especially considering it's the first game. And while the sequels would greatly expand on this game's gameplay, this, like I said, it was the first game. It really is odd that there's only two characters to choose from and neither of them are girls. There's only one vehicle, which is the Metal Slug itself, really, and the tiny bit of slowdown can be annoying. But all of these can be chalked up to it's the first game in the series and gets heavily improved throughout the series. The game only took uh, my bro and I about 25 minutes to beat. We had infinite continues though, so yeah, we aren't exactly the best either. I will say something that I don't like in the game is the jumping. The jumping feels very delayed and heavy. This would obviously get addressed in future games, but it feels very heavy and just kind of clunky. And anytime you have to do any real jumping, it's, it's just not the best. The jumping feels about a second delayed, and it's not anything on my end. The first Metal Slug just kind of has delays. It led to some unfair deaths, that's for sure. But like I said, we had infinite continues, but I could see someone getting really pissed off if they had to put quarters in and they died because of delayed controls or something. 
Next is that the game doesn't exactly have any replay value with the game. I don't really ever see myself coming back to the original Metal Slug. Maybe if I saw it in arcade, but probably not. I'd probably want to save the money. Overall, the Metal Slug was a really fun time, at least the original. It was really fun running in, around. The gameplay is just really enjoyable. It has a good sense of humor. It is excellent animation. It just has a rockin' soundtrack. That's what the game strives to be more than anything else. It's just a bunch of fun, giving you big guns, shooting lots of things, blowing shit up, and it succeeds in that aspect. I think SNK knew they kind of struck gold with the series here and would go on to continue it and only better things would come from here. That's the root of the Metal Slug series, the original game, a fun running gun shooter. And if you haven't played it, I recommend you try it just to see the roots of Metal Slug. But the series would only really go up and up and up from here. And well, that's what I'm going to be looking at for the rest of the month. We're going to go to Metal Slug 2 and on. So I'll see you guys for Metal Slug 2 real soon. So here we are with Metal Slug 2, released two years after the original. It was obviously released in the arcades, and the only console it was on in America was the Neo Geo till the Wii. So Metal Slug 2 takes place after the first game by a few years, I guess. Basically, Morden has come back bigger than ever, it seems. Marco and Tarma head out again, but this time they are joined by two main female characters, Ari and Fio. Anyway, they're on their mission to stop Morden. Well, they quickly find out that the reason he was able to rise up again was thanks to aliens. Yes, this is when Metal Slug introduces aliens. A majority of the game, you are fighting soldiers and Alan the Machine Gunner again, but at the end of the game, you actually fight aliens. They actually abduct Morden, and then his army teams up with you to defeat the aliens. Afterward, you defeat them, and Morden is released. Defeated again. The story feels a little more grand with the introduction of aliens, and I actually like the aliens in Metal Slug. I love the supernatural crap that shows up in the series, and it all started here, so that's great. The story's good, and I like the other characters introduced. Theo and Ari are great additions, and uh, makes it so it's not just full of testosterone. It's not only for the boys now. But anyway, let's look at the game now. You can choose between one of the four characters, and of course, uh, my dude and I played through the whole game. The gameplay is pretty much identical to the first game, where your character can jump, crouch, shoot from their guns, throw bombs, use a knife at close range. You kill basically everything that moves to the right at all times. You're moving to the right like the entire game, except when you're occasionally stopped to kill all the enemies in the area and collect power-ups. Bosses return again as well, being bullet sponges again and, well, kicking your shit in again. You still rescue the POWs, they give you either points or weapons. They definitely give you a weapon more often than not though. All the weapons from the previous game return. The flame shot has been changed a bit. It has been changed to what we know as it is today. So yeah, it's way better. It's a big flame blast. This game introduces the laser, which shoots a long single beam that can just eviscerate enemies. It introduces fire bombs as well, which is really helpful for vehicles. Speaking of which, the game introduces a few new vehicles, in addition to the main metal slug itself returning, of course. It introduces the camel slug, which is has the same Gatling gun as the metal slug, just no tank part, and you're, you're able to be attacked while you're on this. There is the slugnoid armor, which is this big mech you sit down and shoot in, but uh, that's only for one boss. And the slug fire, which is flyer, which is a VTOL that can annihilate pretty much everything. All of these are incredibly fun to use and make you feel even more powerful. Something the second game introduces is character transformations. You don't die, but simply transform. The first one that shows up in the game is in level 2 with the mummies. If you get hurt by a mummy, you yourself become a mummy where you shoot very slowly, throw bombs at an agonizingly slow rate, and are just very slow in general. However, you can find a potion that will make you become human again, or you can die again to become human. The other transformation is when you collect a bunch of food in level 4. Food is just kind of everywhere here, and if you collect enough of it, you actually become fat. When you're fat, you move slower, but shoot out bigger projectiles, attack with a fork instead of a knife, and throw cherry bombs. It's actually a decent power-up, and it is quite humorous. And you can find diet powder to become small again. The last thing to mention is supporting characters. Occasionally, a POW you find decides to help you. He shoots Hadoukens and can kill stuff. Also, in the final level, the army, yeah, the army teams up with you to fight the aliens. Speaking of aliens, the enemies have been mixing it up. Instead of just soldiers, they have much more crazy shit like the mummies I mentioned. Freaking mummies come in, aliens come in, and even more. And, well, a train even comes to kill you. A train. I like how Metal Slug is becoming wackier in the enemy department. But besides that, it plays the same as the first one with some minor improvements. 
The graphics have been improved by a bit as well. It looks better than the first game. The sprites look good and animate very well. All of them are packed to the brim with detail and have just a bunch of charm as well. Even more so here than the first game. And you can just see the game's sense of humor through the graphics. The explosions look great, the guns are great, the other enemies that aren't soldiers are awesome, and I, the backgrounds, they look sick. I love how the game looks. However, there was an issue. By making the game look a little better, um, the slowdown in this game is really bad. This is actually the worst slowdown in the entire series. The game drops frames and just generally comes to a chug a lot. It doesn't have to get that crazy for the frame rate to just totally die in the game and come to a crawl. It kind of ruins the pacing of the game to be honest. Like when you get to this boss and the game just becomes so slow, like a couple, like we're talking one digit frames. And when the game becomes this slow, it definitely becomes a little easier because you can process everything going on. But it made the game just slower, like play slower. And the slowdown is just really bad in this game. In fact, this is easily the worst slowdown in the entire series. The game drops frames and just generally chugs a lot. It doesn't even have to get that crazy for the frame rate to just totally die and come to a crawl. And it really ruins the pacing. It's not appealing to the eye at all. And it's definitely my biggest issue with the entire game is that this frame rate sucks. The slowdown is just really bad, but the rest of the presentation is good. It's just that slowdown kills everything. In a really fast action, running gun game, you need a constant frame rate, and while the original Metal Slug did have some issues here or there, it only occasionally slowed down. That was in like the most extreme cases. This, this is just all the time. But enough about that, how about the sound? All the sound effects from the first game return, they're just as awesome here, and I love all of them. There are some new ones here, and well, yeah, it's great. A lot of the new ones are definitely good. I have no complaints there. I love the sound clips that all the characters make, I love the enemies, the sounds they make, especially when they die. The announcer is a bit of a higher quality than the first game, you can really understand what he's saying, for sure now. And the music? Oh yeah, that's good. I'd say it's about as good as the first game, it's got some really awesome tunes to it and really gets you in the mood to just kill some shit, and it's really well done. Music is not as good as some of the sequels, but it's still really well done, I like the music quite a bit. The sound is great also. Now I get to talk about the stuff that wasn't great in Metal Slug. And the first and most obvious issue is that frame rate slash slowdown. It is the biggest issue of the game by far. It slows the game down. It kind of ruins the pacing in many aspects. It's just not nice to look at. The game retains its brutally difficult gameplay from the first game and will be a quarter munching machine if you actually play this in the arcade. Because of the slowdown, the game is actually a bit longer than the first game, even though this game also has 6 levels. It took around 45 minutes to beat with infinite continues and that's thanks to the slowdown and longer levels in general. The jumping is still not the best, it feels heavy, slow and can be clunky, and that's probably due to the frame rate. There is more platforming in this game than the first and these sections can be kind of annoying, especially in levels where you gotta do a decent amount of platforming. It can just be a bit finicky and it's not as great as it could be. It still feels rather delayed but I'm gonna probably blame the frame rate on that one. Besides that though I can't find any other issues but that frame rate is a really big issue. It's definitely the worst frame rate the franchise has ever seen. And while the game still is fun and has some good moments and great music I can confidently say overall this is the weakest Metal Slug in the main series. It's still a good game, don't get me wrong, but when compared to the other games in the series, it's just not as good. Most of the levels are pretty good, the music's pretty good, the graphics are good, but that slowdown just drags it down to the point where I can easily say it's my least favorite in the series. Main series. It's still a good game though, don't get me wrong. But, big but here, SNK knew that this wasn't exactly the best Metal Slug 2 that could exist, and they actually remade Metal Slug 2 shortly after the release of the game. Yeah, it's still a good game, don't get me wrong, but when compared to the other games in the series, it's just not as good. And they knew. They knew it wasn't as good as it could be. So what did they do? They re-released the game a year later as Metal Slug X, a remake, and well, it's a bit of a better experience. And in the next video, we will be covering the remake of Metal Slug 2, known as Metal Slug X. I'll see you guys there. And so here we are with Metal Slug X, which was released a year after Metal Slug 2. It was actually released in the arcades in 99, and would be released on the PS1 in 2001, then would go on to be on the anthology, of course. So Metal Slug X is a total revamp of Metal Slug 2, 
SNK saw that Metal Slug 2 had some serious slowdown and while they wanted to fully address it, it was easily my biggest issue with Metal Slug 2. Remaking the game basically completely, changing up enemies, bosses, music, adding a bunch of new weapons, and even a new vehicle. The plot remains exactly the same though with Morden and the aliens. Story's still good. For this review, I'll only be talking about new stuff really for the game when compared to 2. The first and most important thing to say is that the gameplay, there's no slowdown. There is no slowdown in the gameplay, like, at all. It's pretty much non-existent. Basically none at all. Only when shit gets really crazy in Metal Slug X is there any slowdown at all. It's even less than the first game in terms of slowdown. It just runs smooth as hell at a nice frame rate like 95% of the game. That is the biggest and most important change to the gameplay. Other than that, it is Metal Slug 2 with some slight additions and variations. You still move left to right, killing everything. There has been some variation to the enemies with a lot more stranger enemies showing up earlier and more frequently. It's not just soldiers a majority of the time. Even the bosses have been switched around a bit in terms of location. All the levels are structurally the same though. You still start in the desert and end at the alien spaceship that looks like Independence Day. They added four new weapons to the game. Four. That's more than Metal Slug 2 added by itself. They added the Iron Lizard which shoots out robot mice with bombs on it. These go across the terrain in a basically infinite range. It is like the strangest weapon in the whole series actually. The game introduces the best weapon in the whole series by far which is the enemy chaser. It shoots out rockets that are heat seeking. This thing just wrecks everything is my favorite weapon in the series by far and I think it's most people's favorite weapon by far. They added the super grenade which is like a grenade launcher that shoots bombs and yeah it shoots bombs. Then there's the drop shot which shoots a bouncy cannonball and this weapon is pretty fun actually. I love how many weapons there are now in Metal Slug, and this is like peak Metal Slug in terms of weapons. They all feel just fantastic to use and they're all really good at killing stuff. It's kind of refreshing to see a game where every weapon is actually good in the game. Usually running gun games have that one bad weapon, like Contra as the laser, but not here. Metal Slug has only useful and good weapons and it's awesome. The new slug introduced is the Golden Metal Slug, which is only in the third mission, and it's just a normal Metal Slug but can move faster and jump higher. Also, Metal Slug adds a second vehicle on each level for a second player or a replacement if your previous vehicle gets destroyed in single player. In the original, there was only ever one vehicle per level, so it was usually whoever got to it first between my friend and I, which is pretty nice. Other differences from 2 include um, almost every level takes place at a different time of day. Like, the first level is at night instead of the day. Uh, you still can only become a mummy in level 2, and it sucks. But becoming fat is much better as you can now do even more damage when you're fat. You can also become fat in every level after level 2 instead of just the 4th level. There's even super versions of previous weapons like big heavy machine gun but these are quite limited. And the last new addition to the gameplay is probably stones which replace the bombs and these are alright but not as good as bombs. The gameplay of X is fantastic actually. They took everything awesome from 2, improved it, and got rid of the bad stuff from 2, like the frame rate being shit. The graphics are exactly the same as 2, and I already commented on them in my 2 review, and that frame rate rocks now. The sound is quite different though, everything is louder and higher quality first off, but a lot of remixes were added and new music was used altogether in some areas, and it's just fantastic. The music in Metal Slug X is just fantastic. It is a great soundtrack and is one of the best in the entire series. It's not even close. This soundtrack just kicks ass. I love it. It's a superb soundtrack. There's not a single bad track in the entire game. The only ones that stayed from 2 were what I considered to be the best ones in 2 anyway. So no great tracks were left behind, as far as I can tell. It's a wonderful soundtrack. But what isn't wonderful about Metal Slug X? There's really not much to complain about here. Maybe like a slight lack of replay value, especially if you already played 2. The jumping feels better, but it's still a little delayed, it's not perfect. But other than that, I really don't know what else to say, it is peak Metal Slug. The levels are all fantastic, the flow is wonderful, the pacing is greatly improved from 2. The lack of slowdown took the game down to like 35 minutes to finish instead of 45. The new weapons add even more variety to the game. No, Metal Slug X is peak arcade run and gun and is a fantastic game. Run and gun games don't really get all that much better than this game. This game is probably the best starting point for Metal Slug as well. It's not crazy difficult like Metal Slug 1. It's still hard, don't get me wrong. But it's not as hard as the first, second, or third game. 
And if you haven't played this game and consider yourself a Metal Slug fan, well, you're a liar. There is literally no reason to go back to Metal Slug 2 because Metal Slug X is around. It shits all over the second game, has a way better frame rate, and it's a much better game and has some fantastic additions as well. I had a total blast playing through this game and I highly recommend it to anybody who likes just killing stuff. It's as much fun as it gets. So I'll see you guys on the next video. So here we are with the third game in the main series, but the fourth Metal Slug game overall. And that is Metal Slug 3, which was released in 2000 in Japan and 2001 in America on the Neo Geo. It was also released for the Xbox in 2004 and has since been released on all modern consoles and is generally considered the fan favorite of the Metal Slug series. This is the Metal Slug game that I have the most previous experience with, playing it even in the arcade, and this was the first one I ever played through. I actually even did a review of this game back in high school, but uh, I'm going to act like I didn't and uh, private that. So here is Metal Slug 3. Metal Slug 3 in terms of plot doesn't stray too far from the other ones. While Morden might be missing from Metal Slug 2, his followers are still at large and it's up to Marco, Tarma, Theo, and Eri to destroy these rebel bases. Soon after destroying a few, Morden does indeed show up with Alan again. Well after he shows up, he actually gets abducted by the returning aliens along with whoever your player 1 is. So you then team up with the rebels to take out the aliens once and for all. This part is just awesome as you rescue everyone and destroy those alien bastards. The story of Metal Slug 3 might start out a little different, but then it all goes down the familiar route and actually mixes it up a little bit with the aliens. I think it's the best story in the series so far. I mean, that's not saying too much though. But I like the story nonetheless and it makes you feel like a total badass throughout the whole storyline. So Metal Slug 3 retains the gameplay from Metal Slug X and makes some new additions as well. You move left to right killing literally everything with big guns and blowing shit up. Everything you do in the previous games is still here and you kill a bunch of soldiers and creatures. You rescue POWs, get points, and try not to die a bajillion times. The biggest change to Metal Slug that is present in 3 is the branching paths. Yes, in almost every level there are forking paths for the player to choose from with each of their own obstacles and varying links in difficulty. Meaning that you will have to play through the game twice if you want to see all the paths. Meaning right there, they actually address something from Metal Slug 1 and 2. The replayability, it's here now. And while all the paths do eventually leave to the same boss battle, players might have totally different equipment, rescued more or less hostages, and you've even killed different enemies depending on the path. There are five levels in Metal Slug 3, however, these levels are significantly longer than the previous game's missions. In fact, the last level, I'd say, is like the length of the original game. I'm dead serious. The last level is like 30 minutes long. And then with these branching pathways, you are easily looking at the longest Metal Slug game, period. These levels have a ton of different parts to them and you go across a variety of locations even in one level it is definitely the most varied of all the metal slugs it's also the most varied of enemies as you don't fight like any soldiers in this game you fight monsters you fight giant crabs zombies some infantry and of course the aliens i love how you just fight all these creatures monsters and all this other crazy shit in the game even the very first 30 seconds you're fighting giant enemy crabs no metal slug 3 just is not messing around with the enemies. It's awesome. Now, Metal Slug 3 actually doesn't add any, any new weapons at all. They realized they had a stacked arsenal in Metal Slug X and they didn't need to add anything. Every weapon shows up here and it's great. The other bomb types are here as well. It is just peak Metal Slug arsenal. They didn't need to add anything. It doesn't get any better than this, really. To make up for the lack of new weapons, they actually introduced quite a number of new vehicles. Some of them you can totally miss if you don't take the right path for them, though. The first one they added was the Slug Marina, which is a submarine. This thing kicks ass underwater. And yeah, you actually go underwater, a first for Metal Slug. There's an elephant which has a giant cannon on it. This thing's awesome. Instead of the camel from 2, we get an ostrich. It's basically the same. There's Rebel Armor, which is the only vehicle in the game to have actual ammunition. All the other vehicles have unlimited ammunition. Not unlimited bombs, but unlimited Gatling gun ammunition. The Slug Copter, which is literally a helicopter and just bombs the shit out of everything. And lastly, we have, it, we have the Astro Slug, which you go into space with and shoot tons of shit with. Missiles, rockets, machine guns, you got plenty of stuff to shoot with. Like I mentioned earlier, you go after the aliens, and how do you get the space? You go with this vehicle. The vehicles are just fantastic. They might be the best in the entire series. And a few of the old ones even return as well. The gameplay 
is like actually the peak of Metal Slug. I think this is the best gameplay the series has with the most variety and is a blast to play. Now when it comes to the graphics, they're pretty much the same as X. Everything still has a great amount of detail, charm, and animates great. The sense of humor in this game is the best, maybe in the whole series. There's so many little funny moments present that can only be done with really well done am animation. Everything animates great, the backgrounds look excellent, the bosses look just incredible for the most part. I got no complaints here. This is just SNK at their very best. The sprites are all great. The frame rate was rock solid, I just never had any issues, like at all. It was just as smooth as X, and the pacing of the game was fantastic thanks to that. The, pre the presentation? Exquisite, as the French would say. I'm doing the little, like, good, okay thing. The music in the game, in fact, in fact, you know what, no. The sound of Metal Slug 3, fantastic as well. Nothing but a huge amount of praise for it. The sound effects are mostly reused for Metal Slug X, but there are a number of new ones, and these just kick ass. Everything sounds powerful, beefy, and is extremely satisfying. It helps add to just the game's overall quality, and every running gun game should strive to have shotgun sound effects this good, should strive to have machine gun sound effects this good, should strive to have explosion sound effects this good. All of the sound effects are hella good. The sound clips from the enemies and characters, classic Metal Slug stuff. The announcer is again on point with heavy machine gun and all of his other sayings. Then we get to the music of Metal Slug 3. The music is easily my favorite music in Metal Slug. It may be my favorite SNK music of all time, actually, and Fatal Fury's got some good music, too. There is not a bad track here at all. There are a few reused tracks from X, I will say, but these are the very best of X, and I can count on one hand how many actually come back. No. The music is just superb. It's not even close. This game has the most music of any of the Metal Slug games as well. It's all rock, and it's all kicks ass. I could spend another 5 minutes talking about how great the music is in Metal Slug 3. The amazing beach theme that got into Smash Brothers when you're flying in the rocket ship, when you're fighting the zombies. No, it's not even close. Metal Slug 3 has fantastic music. None of the other Metal Slug games can even touch this game when it comes to music. Metal Slug 3 whoops ass. In fact, you'd be pretty hard pressed to find someone who enjoys a, a game's Another Metal Slug game's soundtrack, more than three. In all honesty, I've been listening to the soundtrack for years. It's just so good. So you can just imagine how hype I was when I saw it even got into Smash Brothers. I think I'm going to stop talking about the music because I could be here till I bleed from my asshole, honestly. So is there anything bad about Metal Slug 3? No, not really. This game isn't perfect, but in my opinion, it's the best Metal Slug game of them all. Even the jumping feels better than X. Like, it's still not, you know, exactly how I'd want it, but better than X. The pacing is fantastic, the levels are fantastic, they're expertly designed. Oh yeah, and they're hard as shit. This is easily the hardest Metal Slug game of them all. Not just because it's the longest, but the obstacles you face and the bosses in this game are not fucking around at all. Despite the game being hard as shit, and easily the hardest in the series, I still had a blast playing this game. It is just a master class of a video game. The game takes well over an hour to finish, making it easily the longest Metal Slug by far, and like I said earlier, there's actual replay value, and you can go to the other routes, and you can have a ton of variety. There's so many weapons to use, there's tons of weapons. If you couldn't tell, I just love this game. It is not only my favorite Metal Slug game, but it's probably my favorite running gun arcade style shooter game ever. It just doesn't get any better than this for an arcade running gun game. The level design, the music, the weapons, it just does not get any better. I absolutely recommend this game to everyone who likes vi video games in general. I can't imagine you not liking it. Maybe it's too hard, but I mean, play on free play then and you'll, you'll probably be fine. This is the only Metal Slug I've ever played in the arcade game, that true arcade experience, and I just don't think running gun games get any better. And there's a reason this is the fan favorite Metal Slug game. I totally agree with that. I think SNK knows that too one of my favorite arcade games of all time. But with Metal Slug reaching its absolute peak here in the third main game, would they go majorly downhill after? Will they? Well, we'll look at it next time when we look at Metal Slug 4. So now we are on Metal Slug 4. Metal Slug 4 was originally released in 2002 and in America was released on the Neo Geo and PS2 in 2005. It was also released as part of the Metal Slug 4 and 5 pack on Xbox and PS2. Metal Slug 4 is notable for being the first Metal Slug to not be made by the original team. See, SNK actually went bankrupt a bit before 
the game came out and Mega Enterprise held the rights to Metal Slug after the bankruptcy and they really like Metal Slug so they decided if they don't have the original people to make it right now they would make one of their own. So here we are with Metal Slug 4, often looked at as the odd one out in the Metal Slug series for not being developed but directly by SNK. Anyway, Metal Slug 4 takes place after 3 and there really doesn't seem to be much of a plot here. The classic general seems to be here, but there is a new villain group known as Amadeus. I think that's how you say it. They are apparently creating a new cyber virus that could actually destroy the entire world's military system. I actually got that from the wiki since the game makes no mention of this at all. While Metal Slug games usually have very little plot in them, this is even less than the previous games and the new group gets like no screen time at all to like the end of the game, not even a mention. And I can easily say it's the weakest plot for the mainline Metal Slug games. Something else that is different is the characters. Metal Slug 4 introduces Trevor and Nadia. They are called in because Tarma and Eri are busy, I guess. I don't know how, they show up in the levels, but whatever. They're not playable, that sucks. The main gameplay is thankfully still pretty Metal Slug. It still is similar enough to the other main games where you kill everything and blow shit up. The branching paths are gone though, that sucks. A bonus scoring system was added that allows players to be rewarded depending on how many enemies are killed in the time allotted. You have to pick up an emblem for this to begin. However, you actually have to not die after that and finish the level to get hella extra points. And uh, my friend and I, yeah, we couldn't do that, we suck. So I never even got to use this new bonus point system to the fullest. All the weapons from Metal Slug 3 return, which is cool, and they add a new one, the double heavy machine gun, which is two submachine guns and fires fast. It's pretty lazy, I'm not gonna lie, but it's a fine addition and doesn't take anything away from the game. There are some new slugs as well, however, it seems that all of them are actually just enemy vehicles from previous games. The Bradley, which shoots rockets. The Metal Crow, which shreds enemies, is here, but it's only in two-player. The Crawler, which is like the crane thing from Metal Slug 2 and has a nice machine gun. I, I don't really know. And then there's also the forklift, which I'll be honest is easily the worst vehicle in Metal Slug history. This thing is laughably bad. It just goes up and down and stabs enemies with the forks. It, it sucks. It's a waste of time, honestly, and I felt stupid from using it. There is actually a new transformation in the game, which is the monkey transformation. It's only in one or two stages and doesn't really change all that much. It's pretty similar to being a monkey, mummy, but I mean mummy, monkey, pretty similar, right? I mean, they can grab monkey bars, but I never saw any of that in the game. That's really it for Metal Slug 4 in terms of new additions. There's an area where you go down on a rope similar to Battletoads. I think that's new. There are six stages in the game, and I'll be honest, a lot of them feel pretty lifeless. What I mean is, a lot of them don't really stand out at all, and they all feel very similar to the previous four games. I guess being on the bikes was different, but I don't know, something about these levels just didn't stick with me like the previous couple games. The pacing seems fine enough as well, but the bottom line is it's more Metal Slug. When it comes to the graphics of Metal Slug 4, there's no change here. They're exactly the same as Metal Slug 3. Everything looks good and has some pretty high quality sprite work. Everything looks pretty good, but like I said, there's no improvement from 3. The frame rate is really well done, so luckily that's good. All the sprites look pretty good, and the new ones, if there really are any new ones, are decent enough. I will say a majority, if almost all of the sprites in the game, are actually reused from previous games. All the textures look fine, there's nothing wrong here. Overall, the graphics are just that, fine. The sound I'm a bit mixed on, though. The sound effects are all classic Metal Slug, there's nothing really wrong there. And I'll say everything sounded pretty good to me. Maybe a few sound effects were changed here or there, but most of them were pretty similar. The quality is standard Metal Slug as, as well. My issue is the music. I'm sorry, but Metal Slug 4, when it comes to the music, might be the weakest in like the entire series. There's just nothing memorable here. A majority of it isn't hard rock and awesome. In fact, a majority of it just sounds generic, even for Metal Slug. It just doesn't have that charm, that tempo. And it really doesn't have what made the other soundtracks, in my opinion. And the soundtrack was not done by the original people. It's very clear, because it's not good. In fact, I'd say it's the worst soundtrack in the entire series. Maybe second worst, if it's lucky. And it's easily my biggest disappointment with the game. But that's just the music. What else do I think is wrong with the game? Well, like I said earlier, the levels don't feel special, and they're definitely not anywhere near as memorable as the previous games. I'd say that a majority of the levels just honestly feel like you're going through the motions. A lot of it feels like autopilot. Nothing stands out really at all. And if it does, it's probably not for the better. Like this platforming section near the end of the game. I thought this just sucked. Like this part was not good and one of the worst parts of any Metal Slug. 
Also, that forklift that I mentioned might be the worst vehicle in Metal Slug. But that's really my main issue with the game, is it just doesn't do anything new or different for Metal Slug, and it's been done much better multiple times before. So it's like, why would I play this newer, inferior one and not the old one that's way better, that looks identical to this and plays identical? The game isn't bad, there's just not much to it. If you've played every other Metal Slug, you already know what to expect. It's like, yeah, it's another Metal Slug to add to the, your plate. I mean, otherwise, I'd say, if you haven't played this one, there's really no reason to play it. I mean, if you even see it in the arcade, I'd skip it. Metal Slug 4 is a pretty average game as a whole, and I'm sure the reason for that is because it wasn't by the original team. However, luckily after this, SNK would get their shit together, and Metal Slug 5 would go back to having SNK develop it. So, I'll see you guys on the uh, much better Metal Slug 5. See ya. So here is Metal Slug 5, developed by the SNK we now know, which is SNK Playmore. It was released in 2003 for the arcade, and then for America, the only release it saw was with Metal Slug 4, and then of course the anthology. It's also available on modern consoles as well. So like I just mentioned, after SNK got their shit together, they went back to creating Metal Slug, and that odd Korean company was not making the games anymore, and uh, well, they just kind of went away, and now we have the original people back, or at least some of the original people. And it shows, because Metal Slug 5 makes a number of improvements on the previous game. So Metal Slug 5 takes place after the previous game, I guess, and it seems the military is developing the next generations of Metal Slugs. And these are just massive Metal Slugs, and they all get stolen by terrorists. And a lot of these terrorists happen to look like Shy Guys as well. To my knowledge, the General isn't really in this game, which is kinda lame. But I guess it's interesting, they tried something different, unlike the previous game where they just introduced some weird other new character to fight and they didn't even explain it or do anything. I mean, this game, at least they try to give some minor introduction. I mean, also the final boss is just a straight up demon, which I'm just gonna say alright. Now, I'm not gonna say I like the plot very much, but it is an attempt for a good plot or decent plot or anything, a setup. It's a step in the right direction compared to that previous game. They even add these little cutscenes to try to add some semblance of plot. It's fine. It's not as good as 1 through 3's plot, but in the end, does the plot really matter in Metal Slug too much? I mean, not really. So let's look on what does matter, the gameplay. So Metal Slug 5 is obviously more Metal Slug. Luckily the two new characters from 4 are uh, gone. They've been nuked and never seen again. We have the original cast of characters again, but the gameplay is the same. Kill everything that moves pretty much, use big guns, throw bombs, save some POWs, get in some vehicles, blast your way through a couple levels, move left to right most of the time. Yeah, everything returns from Metal Slug 4, but there is a new movement option, you can slide. Yes, in Metal Slug 5 you can actually slide like Mega Man style, you hold down and jump to slide. It's never appeared in another Metal Slug game and I actually kind of like it, it adds another little tactic to use and I think it's borderline underrated. It's a nice addition. Anyway, I'll say, I will say, right off the bat, while Metal Slug 4 reused almost everything from the previous game, including locations, enemies, etc., Metal Slug 5 is like the opposite, and has almost all original levels and enemies, making the game feel more refreshing, for sure. The new enemies are terrorists that, again, look like shy guys, but they do have new ways of trying to kill you. You fight these guys most of the game, and I don't think you really fight any supernatural monsters except for that demon at the end of the game which is easily the best boss fight in the game, by the way. When it comes to new additions to Metal Slug 5, there are a few. While there are no new weapons, and for some reason the flamethrower is gone, there are three new vehicles, the Slug Gunner, which is a Metal Slug with the level armor. This thing kicks ass and is awesome to use. It needs two people to properly use, though. The Car Slug, which is a car with a machine gun. I mean, that's fine. And the last new addition is the Spider Slug, which is up on the wall shooting everything, and that's a good addition as well. When it comes to other changes in Metal Slug 5, there are a few. While branching paths don't really come back, they are there for two levels, but only briefly. There's no zombie, mummy, or monkey transformations, but you can still get fat. The gameplay really feels like it's tried and true Metal Slug. It feels like it's a step in the right direction from 4. It feels more fresh as well. The pacing is much better and is akin to the previous games. There are some more memorable levels here, like the first one when you're on the boat and it's actually an auto-scroller, and then when you're in the jets killing everything. It's fun stuff. And it definitely is better than 4, which felt like it was on autopilot most of the time and just was really going through the motions in Metal Slug. This definitely feels more original. 
When it comes to the graphics from Metal Slug 5 though, it's really not any different from the previous games. Still really well done sprite work as usual here. All the animation is great really, and a lot of the effects are really done well done as well. Everything animates so fluidly and I wish my recording of it could pick it up properly, but it doesn't do it justice. The textures look good and the frame rate was solid enough. It did dip a few times, but for the most part it was really good. Overall, the graphics are what you've come to expect from Metal Slug. My biggest positive is just that there's new stuff to even see, while 4 had pretty much to just reuse like everything. It's as lazy as it gets. The sound though in this game, oh, the sound is fantastic in Metal Slug 5. While the fourth game might have sucked for sound, Metal Slug 5 is just awesome. The sound effects all kick ass, the announcer rules, and the quality is excellent, but what really stands out is the music. The music in Metal Slug 5 rules. The game goes for a mid-2000s heavy metal soundtrack and this shit is awesome. Every tune is bumping in this game, there's not a bad one. It's probably one of my favorite Metal Slug soundtracks, it might be in my top 3, top 2, it's real close to that first one too. It just rules, it's all so catchy and it just feels Metal Slug, I can feel it radiating from this music. Like, it takes the heavy metal from the previous couple games to the next level in this game, I got no complaints for the soundtrack. If you like metal, you'll love this game and it'll be your favorite soundtrack. I don't have the same level of nostalgia with it that I do for like Metal Slug 3, but this soundtrack, it kicks ass and it's underrated, it really is. There's not a bad track, like, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart, and I could go on forever about this soundtrack. It's easily my favorite part of the whole game is this soundtrack. It really pumps you up when you're playing the game, it gets you in that mood, you want to just kill shit, yeah. And, yeah, it's just great. But let's talk about things that really aren't that great, and to be honest, I can't bring up too much. I do wish the branching paths would return and not be this kind of fake shit like that shows up here. Like, no, just bring it back. And while I think the new enemies are fine, I do miss the General and Alan. I mean, those are like the staples of Metal Slug. These new guys, again, are fine, but don't really cut it for me. Um, not huge on the fact that you don't really fight any crazy monsters or anything, minus the final boss. It's mostly soldiers and vehicles, similar to the original Metal Slug. The aliens and the mummies and the monsters, they're all gone. A lot of the levels do seem really well paced, though, and I, I don't have any problems with them, I'll say that. But the game is also a little shorter than the other Metal Slug games. While 4 was around 40 minutes, this one is like max 30 minutes, which is not the longest. But it is well paced, I will say. And you can actually see this Metal Slug in, our, in an arcade at San Francisco State, which is cool. It's more Metal Slug. If you like Metal Slug, you're really going to like this game, and it's a nice improvement over the previous game. And while it isn't as good as Metal Slug 3, or X, I still think it is a good game, and it definitely are a step in the right direction after that fourth game. It's quite fun, and I love shooting everything in it. It didn't feel stagnant like the previous game either. It's quite fun. I liked it. This would also actually be the last Metal Slug game released on Neo Geo, and the next game we will look at would be the first one specifically made for other consoles. So, I'll see you then. And now we reach Metal Slug 6. This was the first Metal Slug in the main series to not run on the classic SNK Neo Geo arcade hardware and was just developed for regular arcades and consoles. The game would see a North American release as part of the Metal Slug anthology on PS2 and Wii, and I think that's the only way to actually play it still. This Metal Slug is kind of seen as the end of an era, as this would be the last mainline Metal Slug release for home consoles for a very long time. But anyway, let's get into the game. The game seems to take place after Metal Slug 3, or 4, or I don't know, maybe the other Metal Slug games, it's not exactly clear. And it seems Morden's armies come back. It seems that way, but of course you learn that there are much worse things going on as new aliens have shown up to wreck your shit. And well, you kick their ass. While I am still a bit bummed that Morden does not actually come back as the main antagonist, I again think the story is fine. The setup really is just as fine as it was in the previous game, and I'm not going to come out and say it's good or great or any of that stuff, or even as good as Metal Slug 1 through 3, but again, it's fine. Something new is that we have two new characters, actually. We get Ralph Jones and Clark Still from Akari Warriors. Yeah, that old NES series that isn't exactly the best where you just die over and over. The two main guys have come to help the Metal Slug team. So you now have six playable characters. You have the main four that have always been there and these two new guys. Honestly, Ralph and Clark are just kind of perfect additions to Metal Slug, and it makes me kind of wonder why it took them so long to be added to begin with. So Metal Slug 6, for the most part, is pretty slimmer, similar to the other Metal Slug games. You still run around killing everything that moves and blasting your way through five levels. 
However, this Metal Slug is definitely the Metal Slug to make the most changes from the original game. Like, it's not even close. This game changes the Metal Slug formula the most from Metal Slug 1 and on. Let's go over some of the new additions. First off is that the game actually has two modes to play. You can play on easy or hard. Easy is some real baby shit where the game sets your default weapon to heavy machine gun and you have infinite ammo for it. However, the game doesn't actually let you finish the game as it locks the last level out. Then we have hard mode, the true mode of play that my friend and I played through, where it's like regular Metal Slug where you have just the pistol with infinite ammo, or, well that's what you spawn with. However, playing on hard does make your ammo count go down for weapons that you pick up in the game, so it really does become harder. A brand new mechanic is the weapon stock system. You can actually carry two gun power-ups at the same time and you can switch between the two weapons or simply put them both away. Whenever you obtain a new weapon power-up, it will automatically occupy the inactive slot. So yeah, there is a little bit of strategy to m maybe you want to go through the level with just the pistol and save your heavy weapons for the boss. Maybe you just want to try to get to the boss as fast as possible and use them. But I actually really like this idea of being able to store two different weapons. It's quite unique and certainly different. However, if you get a game over, you lose both, which kind of sucks. The score mark multiplier returns, but it's different from Metal Slug 4. The faster the speed at which enemies are killed, the higher the power of the multiplier at the bottom of the screen. When it says max, enemies will drop coins when you kill them for even extra points. This is how you do a score multiplier, not that Metal Slug 4 shit. This is much better, and you don't have to not die in the level to get your points. The next addition to the gameplay is probably the biggest change in the whole game. The, that change is that each playable character now has their own unique attributes. In the previous six games, all the characters were identical apart from appearance, but that is totally different in this game. Everyone is totally different from each other. Some characters are faster than others, some characters have more defensive ability and slugs, some people have more ammunition, and some people do more damage. In addition to that, everyone has their own special ability. For instance, Marco has twice the strength of everyone else, Tarma has extra durability in, his, in slugs, and he has a special gun in them. Fio begins every mission with a heavy machine gun no matter the difficulty. Aria has twice as many grenades when she spawns, starting with 20 instead of the usual 10. Ralph has probably the most unique ability, where his melee attack speed is doubled, but his ammunition for bombs and weapons is halved. But what makes him stand out is he can take two hits. Yes, he can actually get back up after getting hit. Clearly a reference to Ikari Warriors, where you respawn quickly with ABBA. And Clark gets a unique melee move where he's invincible and receives more points than anyone else. This adds quite a dynamic change to Metal Slug as a whole as now your character matters. It almost adds a little bit of strategy what you want for the current situation. Do you want bombs? Do you need more ammunition? Do you want to take an extra hit? I played through most of the game as Ralph and I was able to take a lot more punishment than any of the other characters ever. And I basically had no ammo the entire game. It's a really unique addition to Metal Slug, and it's kind of surprising to see something this dynamic added in the seventh game. Changes to Metal Slug as a whole were not very plentiful at all, but this this is a decent change. This is definitely a decent change. But I think it's actually a really unique addition, and it's kind of unknown, as most people think Metal Slug has just kind of always been the same, but this quite changes it up a bit. But it might be even more unknown, because it was never released in the West, in arcades. Now, when it comes to any other additions to Metal Slug 6, there is some new vehicles. All the weapons return from the previous couple games. There is a new weapon where it's this kind of beam sword thing. It is very short range and very limited ammo, but it does a lot of damage. It's also probably the rarest weapon in the game, so I forgot it was even there. Something gone, though, from Metal Slug 5 is the slide. The new slugs in the game are the donkey slug, which is basically the camel, where it's just an animal with a gun. The slug digger, which is a digger that goes down. You actually have to drill through the dirt and is one of the most unique vehicles in the entire franchise. You actually have to dig through the ground and if your vehicle gets destroyed, you die. You can even drop like mines or something similar to that. Then there's the slug zoid Z, which has two giant cannons on it. And of course, a bunch of the older vehicles return from the previous games. But those are the new additions to Metal Slug 6. It does change quite a bit, like I said, to the formula. Something else is that that's worth bringing up is that there might only be five levels but these are some really hard levels I mean my friend and I played through the game on hard of course and we thought it was gonna be hard but this might be the hardest Metal Slug game of them all the only one I think that rivals it is Metal Slug 3 but Metal Slug 3 was probably twice the length of this game this game is around maybe 35 minutes max 40 minutes and Metal Slug 3 is considerably longer but in terms of sheer difficulty in that 35 minutes it was hard, and they are not messing around. The game is generally pretty stingy with weapons. 
there are just tons of enemies on screen and a lot of new ones. And the bosses are no joke in this game. I think I died to some of these bosses more than any of the other bosses in the older games. This game is just not messing around. And finishing a level and actually getting the bonus points for rescuing the POWs? Good luck. Like the previous games, if you die, all the hostages you rescued, they don't count. They even add a new alien hostage. And yeah, it doesn't matter. You're not going to get any of them. This game is mad hard. The gameplay is Metal Slug to the fullest, and I'll just say it's not messing around this time. When it comes to the graphics, I gotta say it's a slight improvement over 5, not by a lot, but the quality just seems to be a bit better as a whole. The animation is still very well done, the sprites look great and continue the great SNK sprite work, they animate really nice, and everything looks really nice. Bosses look sick in this game also. The textures really well done, these definitely looked a bit better than the previous couple games and were certainly more dynamic and they packed a bit more detail as well. I just never had any issues with the frame rate or the textures or really the graphics at all. It's just a shame my recording was broken for some stupid corruption thing with my capture card, piece of shit. Overall, there is nothing to complain about with the graphics, pure Metal Slug goodness. Sound is a bit different from the previous games. The reason it's different is because it's not using the Neo Geo chip since it wasn't developed on the Neo Geo console. With this in mind, the sound is a much higher quality than the previous games. The sound effects sound borderline different in some cases, it's so different and just sounds that much higher quality. The announcer sounds different also, but I really think that's due to higher quality. It still sounds great though. The music is where it's most notably higher quality as more instruments are used and songs are a lot more dynamic. In terms of the music itself, I think it's just good. There's a couple tracks that are just awesome in this game, like the boss themes. And like, there's even two final boss themes. But a lot of the level themes were just kind of generic. They just didn't really catch on with me, but the ones that did catch on were really fantastic. But unfortunately, it's kind of few and far between, but at least there are a couple that I do think were really good, but there were a few that were also generic. Still, it's definitely no slouch, it's just the Metal Slug series has been better, like even the previous game I think has way better music. But like I said a minute ago, the quality is definitely the best Metal Slug has ever had. Certainly the best sounding. The catchiest? No, but it's certainly the best sounding. But it's alright. Now we've talked about what's good with the game, let's talk about things that I might not like in Metal Slug 6. While I thought the game was a bit stingy with the weapons on hard, I used the pistol a lot of the game and I did play as the character with the least amount of ammo, so that's probably on me. But the game is brutally difficult, but I wouldn't say that's too much of an issue since we are playing on free play. I would say all five of the levels are not bad. They're all pretty good in Metal Slug 6, there's not a stinker in the game, and all the levels are pretty unique, but not compared to Metal Slug like 3 or X. But I'm gonna say they're still pretty fun, and I'd still say they're on the same level as Metal Slug 5, but man, I do wish that that slide returned. Also, like, why can't the branching pass just come back? Like, come on, that was so cool. But Metal Slug 6, I gotta say overall, despite those niggling little gripes, tiny little gripes, I gotta say, like... Yeah, it's, it's still a solid entry in the Metal Slug series. It's probably the most underrated of the Metal Slug games. It's very clear why, as this game is the most limited accessibility. But also, this Metal Slug really changed up the formula more than any other Metal Slug. And I think it should be commended for that. Some risks were clearly taken here, and they didn't just churn out another left or right kill everything that moves shooter. They wanted to change something in the game, and I think the addition of the Akari Warriors was awesome. Overall, I had a blast with the game. Playing through with my friend was pretty fun, and we were both surprised about how much changed in the game. If you played the previous Metal Slug games, I have no problem recommending this one. It's certainly one of the most unique Metal Slug games in them all. This would be the last Metal Slug game to actually get an arcade release. And while the arcade release was never brought to America, it still really marks the end of an era for Metal Slug. Going from being the quintessential arcade running gun shooter. Arcades were dead in America and hadn't really resurfaced in Japan yet. This is just like a weird time for arcade games, arcade-like games, and Metal Slug had to change. And with that, the series moved on over to one of the most unexpected places, the DS. And so, next time we're going to look at Metal Slug 7, or better known as Metal Slug XX. See ya then. And here we are with the last main entry into the Metal Slug franchise as of this recording, as of 2020. Metal Slug 7. Metal Slug 7 is particularly interesting, especially when compared to the previous seven games. First off, it wasn't developed for arcades at all. Arcades were just not really a thing when this game came out, and so Metal Slug 7 was released on the DS of all things. It was released in 2008 worldwide. 
The game would go on to be remade two years later for the PSP known as Metal Slug XX. Then about eight years later it was re-released on PS4. Nine for the PC actually, the version I am looking at today. XX is really just a bit more of an enhanced version of 7 and adds some, it adds a new character. In terms of a full list of differences between XX and 7, I'm not exactly sure. I'm sure someone has it online though. I just know that if you're going to play this game in this day and age, you're going to be playing XX. But enough about the release history of this game, let's get right into it. So Metal Slug 7 takes place right after Metal Slug 4. And General Morden is back again. He is wrecking shit again and it's up to our heroes to stop him. And after they are able to beat Morden for the first time, soldiers from the future actually show up to come help Morden. However, even these prove futile to our main characters and they still are able to defeat Morden. The story goes back to the good old Metal Slug days where Morden is the bad guy, he gets some help from some supernatural force but is still defeated in the end. I honestly like this plot more than the last couple Metal Slug games and don't get me wrong it was kinda nice they tried to do something different in the previous couple games. I just prefer this setup. It goes back to being basic and having the familiar face as the antagonist and yeah he has a new way to try to stop our heroes and that's how I think it should be in Metal Slug so I actually like the plot. But let's look at the gameplay. Metal Slug 7 is the previous six characters returning but the XX version actually introduces a new character. This new character is Leona from King of Fighters. There are now three difficulties in the game, there being easy, normal, and hard. We played through the game on just normal. There are seven levels, which is the most of any Metal Slug game. The unique gameplay traits from Metal Slug 6 return, where every character is their own attributes. Some of them have been modified a little bit, but most of them are pretty similar, where every character is totally different, like Marco does more damage, Aerie is more grenades, and Ralph can still take a hit before dying. Leona gets slightly more ammunition for weapons and grenades, extra durability on the slugs, and can use a special moon slash attack that can damage artillery and you can actually block projectiles with it. She's a fine addition to Metal Slug. I still really like the entire concept of every character actually being totally different from another and definitely incentivizes replaying the game as someone else. Other than that though, the gameplay remains completely intact. All these years later, and that gameplay is still Metal Slug at its core, and it's still just as fun. You just shoot everything that moves, occasionally get in a vehicle, rescue some hostages, and fight a challenging boss at the end of each level. They even bring back the branching pathways to an extent. It's not as dynamic or different, or in every level, like Metal Slug 3, but I mean, at least they attempted something here. They do actually add a new weapon. They add the Thunder Shot, which is kind of a homing electric blast to the enemy. I'm kind of surprised they even added another weapon to be honest as there's just so many weapons in Metal Slug now but hey I mean that's just another way to kill people. And of course what kind of Metal Slug game would this be if they didn't add some new vehicles? They added the Slug Truck which is a road truck, road train like machine that yeah it's like the regular Metal Slug except the cannon must be connected to the unit to access its secondary weapon however it is destroyed in a single shot. The Slug Dragon, which is a giant robot that has massive firepower, like this thing is probably the biggest slug in the entire franchise and just kicks ass. I mean, you just mow everything down with it, you even fight a boss in it, it's just a blast to use. This thing's like a freaking Gundam, this thing's awesome. The last new slug is the Slug Armor, which has a Vulcan cannon and you can even slide around in it. I actually quite like the vehicles in this game. The gameplay as a whole feels as Metal Slug as it gets, reliving the glory days of the series even 10 years later since its original DS release. They kept the weapon stocking system, the multipliers from Metal Slug 6, which I thought were good additions in the previous game and I'm glad they returned. If you liked Metal Slug before, you'll like this game. Oh yeah, and Alan returns as a boss, like thank you, gosh it's been like 3 games since he showed up and his fight is maybe the best in the game. When it comes to the presentation of Metal Slug XX, the graphics are really the same as Metal Slug, like they're kind of just the same as it's always been. Excellent sprite work, animations, good, good backgrounds, and a solid frame rate. It's kind of funny how the, the graphics are considered retro now, but they still look pretty good for sprites. And if you like the look of the previous Metal Slug games, I think you'll be happy here, that's for sure. The animation is still top notch and the sense of humor is still there all these years later. Backgrounds are easily the best backgrounds in the series and are probably the highest in terms of detail and quality, but this is also the latest Metal Slug game. Frame rate, zero issues, smoothest Metal Slug game of them all. Fantastic. The graphics are familiar, comfortable, and still just great. It's really a testament to SNK as a whole and their sprite work. When it comes to the sound, I'll be honest, I'm not so hot on it. The quality is easily the highest the series has ever had, but they changed a few things. The weapons sound 
totally different. Like, all the sound effects are just different and not the same as the previous couple games. I'm not really sure how I feel about that. I mean, it's alright. I guess they have something new, but at this point, it's like I'd rather just have the classic sound effects. So that I'm a bit mixed on. The announcer is definitely different. I can tell you it is not the same guy that has been there forever. It, it's just not. Luckily, the quality was pretty good, but the music, I'm really not digging in this game. I feel like they took the wrong direction with it. They decided to make it more dynamic than ever, and while I think the songs fit the mood of the levels, I just don't think they're particularly catchy, especially even compared to Metal Slug 6. There's maybe one, max two tracks I like in the game, but a majority of them were just completely forgettable and generic. Like, yeah, I, I just didn't really like it. Compared to the old ones, not very good, and even on its own I thought it wasn't that great either. It's one of the weakest soundtracks, for sure. It's not as weak as Metal Slug 4, but it's not much better. And that's why the sound was a bit mixed for me, as they changed parts of it and that they didn't need to change, and the music is pretty weak. Speaking of pretty weak, it's time to talk about stuff I don't like in Metal Slug 7. And there is some stuff to be honest. While this game does have 7 levels, the most of any Metal Slug game, I'll be completely honest and say a majority of these levels just don't feel that special. They just feel like they're really going through the motions and don't do anything particularly unique or different from the previous couple games. And that's not all the levels, but that is quite a few of them. There are a couple unique levels, like this one here where you have a parachute or the giant slug that's fun. But I feel these levels... Like, these levels were good, but... They weren't all the levels. Not all the levels did something unique and different and fun. And I noticed that the ones that I didn't really have that much fun with had a decent amount of platforming. I don't know why, but this game actually has a bit of platforming in it, and I would say it has more platforming in it than maybe any other Metal Slug game. Like, why? I've never thought the platforming was very good in Metal Slug. I just kind of tolerated it, and most of the games had max, like, one or two levels of platforming, but this game, Metal Slug 7, like every level has platforming, and some levels are just full of platforming, it's like, these are e easily the weakest levels. It's not that the controls are bad, it's just the platforming's always been subpar, and it's not Metal Slug's strength, it's never been Metal Slug's strength, and I think the best Metal Slug games, particularly like 3 and X, have very little platforming, they have max like one level, this game it's like every level, I don't know why they decided to have so much platforming present in this game. Maybe that's a nitpick, but I was not huge on that. Despite the game having the most levels in the series, and being the one developed exclusively for consoles, it's still not even the longest Metal Slug game, clocking in at around an hour. Metal Slug 3 is still longer and has more replayability. But I don't know, maybe that was just me expecting too much. I was just expected it to be a little longer. I mean, it was developed specifically for a console. The game was still fun though, don't get me wrong. It just has a few issues. But overall, Metal Slug XX, or 7, or whatever you want to call it, is a grand return to the Metal Slug franchise after a number of years, and with its current release on modern consoles, I really hope that Metal Slug can actually come back. They've been re-releasing these games for years on everything, but I hope a new Metal Slug does actually come. The game shows that even in modern day, Metal Slug can still be quite fun, and they can throw some new tricks into that gameplay formula. And while I'm not going to say this game is perfect or even peak Metal Slug or even in my top 3 Metal Slug games, I still definitely had fun with the game. You know what to expect with Metal Slug at this point. This is the 8th main game in the series, and it delivers on that front. It's more Metal Slug, and if you liked the previous games or you played them when you were younger or have fun memories, I have no trouble recommending this game and I think you'll have a blast with it. The game has its moments where you feel like a total badass, killing everything, and that's what the series was really made off of. In this game, yeah, this game totally retains that, but as of right now, this is the last Metal Slug game in the main franchise. There have been rumors for quite a while that a new Metal Slug will be released by SNK, and SNK as a whole has been on a rise of late. They got Samurai Showdown that came out. I'm gonna look at that one, the new Samurai Showdown. And Metal Slug is one of their more prolific series, I will say. I have no idea what's taking them so long, but hopefully we can get Metal Slug 8, and it will be just as fun as this game, huh? maybe a little better even. But for the main run and gun games, this is the last one I'll be reviewing. Since, you know, it's the last one that came out. I've had a blast reviewing these last eight games. However, our journey does not stop there with Metal Slug. I have a bit of surprise. And the next Metal Slug game, we're going to look at a spin off in the series. And, uh, I mean, you guys could probably guess which one it is. There's only two in the series. But for the final Metal Slug video, we'll be taking a look at one of the interesting spin offs to Metal Slug. I'll see you then. 
And here we are concluding the Metal Slug franchise review. We are concluding with easily the most obscure game in the series being Metal Slug 3D. It's actually just called Metal Slug, but everyone calls it Metal Slug 3D. Easily the most different and just weirdest game in the whole series, if not one of the weirdest games in SNK's library. Something that makes this game even more obscure is the fact that it never actually came out in America. Metal Slug 3D never left Japan. Now usually I do not look at Japanese only games for the simple reason that I don't read Japanese and I don't think I could give a proper review of the game. I don't know kanji and probably won't ever, it's very difficult. Off that alone, if it's only been released in Japan, I usually throw it out the window immediately, but Metal Slug 3D I can make an exception for, mainly for two reasons. The first reason is that it's Metal Slug. How much reading do you actually have to do? No matter what language the game is, it's Metal Slug. It will always be fun to some degree, right? The second reason and the real reason and the really weird reason is that almost the entire game is in English. In one of the strangest cases I've ever seen for a game, I'd say probably 75% of the game is English. All the voice acting is in English, and almost every menu in the game is in English. Like, the only thing that isn't in English is your mission objective and the save menu. I am playing the game on an emulator since I don't have a Japanese PS2, so I'm just going to use save states for that. But in all honesty, you don't need that as this game is easily beatable in one sitting. But yeah. Like, the entire game is in English, and it's Metal Slug, so I decided why not take a look at this Japanese-only release. So why was this game never released in the West? Well, let's just take a look at the game. Now, there is a legit story in this game. While the other Metal Slug games, of course, had a very small story and occasionally a little cutscene here or there, this game has, like, a full, legit story. Like, with easily over 15 minutes of cutscenes here, they really tried to have something here. Despite them have, trying to have something of a story, it's literally as basic as the other Metal Slug games. It stars our four main heroes again, as usual, the Metal Slug gang, and they go up against General Morden. That's really it. There's a little bit more context given and dialogue about it, but that's really what the story is. They try to flush out some of these characters some more. That's a bit nice, I guess, but uh, the story's still really basic. The beginning of the game sees Marco going solo against the army, but he's quickly joined by the other characters. I gotta say, it is just beyond jarring seeing these characters just talking and interacting with each other in like any way. It's just weird and in all honesty, I kinda don't like it. I just always preferred the very simple approach Metal Slug took. I don't think they ever needed this kind of backstory or banner between the main characters. The story is as basic as the other ones and it was fine in the other Metal Slug games, but in this game, I'm not so sure because despite them trying to put such an emphasis on the story, it really amounts to almost nothing. It's exactly what you would expect and nothing else. Why they needed so many cutscenes is beyond me. And I will just say immediately that there are way too many cutscenes in this game and they go on way too long. It's just completely unneeded. But what is the gameplay like? The gameplay of Metal Slug 3D is of course in 3D. So you play from a zoomed out 3D perspective where you can do basically everything you could do in the old Metal Slug games just you know in 3D. You can still jump, you can still throw bombs, and you press the shoot button as fast as you can to shoot as fast as you can. You still play as one of the main four characters, however at the start you only have Marco. Each character has slight differences, but nothing too game changing. Now because the game is in 3D, there were a number of small changes to the gameplay of Metal Slug. The first biggest change is switching weapons. In this game you can actually hold all of your weapons at once. Once you find it in the game, you hold it for the rest of the game, even if, even if you die. And yes, you can switch between weapons on the fly. All of the weapons from the previous game actually return. They have the machine gun, shotgun, rocket launcher, enemy chaser, flame shot, etc. There was even a new weapon introduced in this game, the sniper rifle, which allows you to aim down the sights and shoot faraway targets. It's pretty basic, though. In addition, you have your knife, but instead you press what would be the triangle button, and even that's considered a weapon. It's also a tonfa for the ladies for some reason. Grenades are thrown with the circle button, and there is a couple different ones present in the game. It's the same as the old games, flame grenade and more devastating grenades. There's also vehicles like Metal Slug traditionally has. There's of course the slugs themselves which can pack a decent punch. There is also the jet and the sub. However, with those two, they're actually just rail shooter levels where it just moves forward automatically. Something interesting is you can actually upgrade your characters and modify your tank slug. Throughout the game, as you kill enemies and destroy boxes in the environment, you'll find these multicolored bars, sometimes gold or red, etc. Each one gives you currency to use to level up your character's stats. Stuff like more damage, health, etc. Oh yeah, I guess that's something to mention. Characters don't die in one hit in this game, they have health. 
and you can find health packs all over. So I guess a nice jump to the third dimension finally let our characters take more than one hit, besides Ralph. You can also use the currency to customize your metal slug, but I totally forgot about this feature to be honest. But how did these levels play out? Well, they play out really similarly to regular Metal Slug, honestly. You run through a little environment killing everything that moves, basically, and you will be frequently locked into an environment until you kill everything. The enemies are all Metal Slug enemies, tanks, soldiers, infantry, etc. There's no crazy enemies in this game, sadly. There is occasionally a little bit of platforming here, and there's occasionally a vehicle section thrown in. But yeah, it's definitely got the structure of a Metal Slug game. And there are still bosses, each of which being actually decently challenging. Like I brought up earlier, there's plenty of other stuff to destroy to give you some of that currency. There's even hostages you can rescue who will give you more life, ammo, etc. It's if you really took the formula of Metal Slug and put it in 3D, it would definitely have this kind of design. And that is somewhat commendable as they really did try their hardest it seems to make it like Metal Slug. Whether or not it works in 3D is a different story. But let's talk about one of the stranger parts of the game, the graphics. The graphics in Metal Slug 3D I think are just bad. This game came out in 2006 and you'd be hard pressed to think this game came out then because it does not look like it. It looks like a very early PS2 game like 2000, maybe 2001, maybe if we're being generous 2002, but not 2006. Even being a budget title I still think it didn't look very good for the time. There were plenty of other budget games that came out years before this on the PS2. Games like Tie the Tasmanian Tiger are a perfect example. So this game just doesn't look very good. The character models just look incredibly strange. I guess this is what they really would look like in 3D, but ugh, it just does not look good. Some characters just don't belong in 3D. They belong as sprites. It's that simple. They look incredibly blocky, especially Marco. The art style as a whole I'm just not a fan of. Other character models don't look as bad as the main four, but the main four just don't look very good. The animation isn't much better either, it all appears kind of choppy in many aspects, it's just generally stiff. It's just not great. The textures are also pretty ugly, a lot of them just don't look very good. This game has almost a cartoony look, but it just kind of doesn't, it's just like stuck in between and I think it just fails on both ends. The textures are just not very good, a lot of them are very dirty and lack refinement. The frame rate seemed fine though, I didn't really have any issues there. Anything I encountered like stuttering, I'm pretty sure was the emulator. That's one reason why I hate playing games on an emulator, it's like is the game slowing down or is it the emulator? My biggest problem with the graphics is they're just very dated and the art style is just not very good. And it's just way too weird to see the characters in 3D. The sound in the game fares on a similar level, I think all the sound effects are good. They have been changed from the original stuff, but I mean it is in 3D, so I mean I kind of expected that and that was fine. It wasn't mind blowing or anything, but the sound effects were there. The music honestly was just kind of there as well as nothing really stood out or was particularly memorable. Everything in the music department was just kind of generic. I don't remember a single track, so I know it wasn't very good. Still better than Metal Slug 4 in terms of music. That was the worst in the series. But the music here, disappointing too. The most disappointing aspect of the sound though is the voice acting. This is the only Metal Slug with voice acting and, well, the characters actually talk here and it's awful. The voice acting is just horrible in this game. Everyone talks very slow, enunciates everything, and there's just no flow to sentences at all. It's like English was not their first language at all. I don't even know why there is voice acting in this game. I don't know why it's in English of all things. I mean, I know they're American soldiers, but I mean, it's a Japanese game. Why isn't... You know what? I don't know, but the voice acting here is just awful. It sucks. Hey, respond. Hey! Oh, nuts! Just what's going on? Out of the frying pan and into the fire! Oh, jeez! So what do we do now? We lost our objective, Morden! So yeah, the sound is disappointing as well, but that's not the only thing disappointing about this game. Metal Slug 3D has actually a heap of issues that prevent it from being as fun as the other Metal Slug games. And honestly, these issues probably tribute to why the game never came over to the West. For starters, the controls in this game are just awkward as hell. They take way too long to get used to. They feel awkward and pretty clunky. There's like a weird amount of weight to the characters that you wouldn't expect. Jumping is quite delayed like actual Metal Slug. 
The camera can be troublesome getting stuck on stuff and just not giving you a very good view, but my main issue with the controls is just changing weapons is awkward as hell. You have to hold L2 and then press square or circle to cycle through them. This was really annoying as it leads to you just fumbling around on the controller trying to switch weapons in the heat of battle, and it's not fast, it's not efficient, and I really never got used to it. And if you hold down R2 and do the same thing, you switch grenades. Again, it's just incredibly clunky. Why couldn't they just have used the D-pad? It would have been way more efficient and faster and easier to understand. My next issue is just that, regu like regular Metal Slug, the platforming kind of sucks. Like I said about a minute ago, the jumping is a bit delayed, like actual Metal Slug. It feels very sluggish, haha. -ha. Whenever you have to do platforming in this game, it's all bad though. It's just not fun and kind of made me tense, tense up whenever I did the platforming. It's, it's just not very good. The vehicle sections in this game are also questionable. The vehicles themselves don't control all that great, particularly the slugs, and can feel really clunky to move around in. It just wasn't designed to be used in 3D, and you can immediately tell. Aiming can also be a bit of a pain in the ass. My next issue is that the game frequently just does not give you enough ammo. I found myself running out of ammo constantly in this game and having to use this crummy pistol way too much. And yeah, I use the pistol quite a bit in regular Metal Slug, but regular Metal Slug is not as long as this game. Use the standard pistol just way too much in this game because you're not given enough ammo. Maybe I was just doing something completely wrong or I just sucked to such a high degree, but I had like no ammo a lot of the time and just found myself constantly having barely enough if any. And then in the final levels, oh boy, there is just nowhere near enough, not at all. Like give me some more ammo and then I can have some more fun with this game. My last issue is that a majority of the levels in this game are just not very engaging, interesting, or do anything to excite me. A majority of these levels just feel very flat, uninspired, and lack any meaningful or interesting level design. I'm serious, they just totally drop the ball on doing anything original and a majority of these levels just don't feel very exciting. I just kind of found myself bored a majority of the game and that's never a good thing, especially for Metal Slug, like come on, even the worst levels of Metal Slug 4 were more interesting than this game. Maybe it's just me, but I didn't find these levels very well crafted in any way, and I think the reason is is because Metal Slug's gameplay doesn't really suit 3D, and really, that's kind of the crux of almost all, if not just straight up all my issues with the game, is that it's in 3D. All these issues were never issues in the previous games because they weren't in 3D. They all show up in this game because it's 3D. Just because you can make a game in 3D doesn't mean you should, and Metal Slug is one of those games that, yeah, you really shouldn't ever make a game in 3D. It's kind of funny, I mean, Contra also tried to do 3D as recent as 2019, and has miserably failed every single time. And while I don't think this game is anywhere near as bad as those games, I still don't think Metal Slug 3D is not a very good game. 3D just does not suit Metal Slug in the slightest, it never has, and I'm certain it never will, especially after seeing this. Its gameplay and ideas just aren't suited for a 3D plane. Take a look at the pistol, you have to tap the shoot button as fast as you can to shoot. It makes sense, in old games it's a 2D shooter, the game's average length in the old Metal Slug games is like 40-ish minutes. It just does not suit a 4 to 5, maybe a little slow 6 hour long game in 3D where it comes off as extremely clunky or pressing the button as fast as you can. It's just kind of annoying. When the game was released, it wasn't exactly received very well, receiving mixed to negative reviews in Japan. And I can see why, because that's how I feel about the game. It's mixed to negative. While it is interesting to see Metal Slug in 3D, and it's just strange to see this game even exist, it's not a very good game. It has a number of issues, and the bottom line is the game is not very fun at all. And that's what Metal Slug has like always been about, is just about being fun. And this game just fails to do that on an, on really any level. So, yeah, this game wasn't exactly a success for SNK, and luckily they would learn from it and go back to 2D with Metal Slug 7. They would never attempt 3D again, and most people don't even know this game exists. And honestly, that's probably for the better, because it's easily the weakest game in the entire franchise. I thought it would be interesting to end the Metal Slug month on such a really quite obscure game in the series, but now it, it seems kind of weird that we're ending on a negative note. Literally like the only true bad Metal Slug game. But, have faith, because Metal Slug I think will come back, and when it does, I'll be right here to review it for you guys.
I don't know when it's coming, but I think another one will come. So, in conclusion with Metal Slug, they're all pretty fun games minus 3D. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this kind of series look at I did for Metal Slug. If you guys have a favorite Metal Slug, tell me in the comments. If you're just weirded out that this game even exists, tell me about it. Anything, I'd love to hear it. With that said, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you've been watching the previous videos, thank you very, very much. If you could like, sub, dislike, comment, whatever it is, don't really mind. Just something. Everyone have a great Christmas. Let's get this bread. See ya.